In 2023, Andrew DiDonato led Grove City College to its most successful football season in school history, its first 10-0 season, first conference championship in 25 years, and first appearance and first victory in the NCAA playoffs. As Andrew explains, the foundation for this success was laid seven years earlier, in his first year as head coach, when the Wolverines finished 0-10. Welcome to the podcast from Grove City College, highlighting excellence, faith, and character in the world of athletics. Welcome to Grit and Glory. I want to start by taking you back to a day last fall, November. Uh, it was a Thursday in November. I happened to be riding into town, uh, rolling down East Main Street. I looked to my left, Thornfield, your team's practicing. Yeah. It looked like typical Thursday practice before a late season game. But this wasn't any Thursday. It was Thanksgiving morning. Yeah. Thanksgiving morning. Um, among the 243 NCAA Division III programs, hmm. your team is one of 16 still alive, right? Yeah. Walk me through that day. You're two days away from your second round NCAA playoffs. I mean, did you see a piece of pumpkin pie that day? Walk <laughs> me through that day. Yeah. You know, one thing that was always special, my, my first coaching opportunity was at the University of Buffalo. In Division One. you play 12 games, you play on Thanksgiving. When I coached high school football, you only got to play on Thanksgiving if you were playing at Heinz Field for the district title. And it was always a thing we talked about playing on Thanksgiving. So when I got here, we knew the only way we'd play on Thanksgiving is if we were in the NCAA playoffs. Because even going to a bowl game, you finish the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And we had never been to an NCAA playoff game before. And when I think of Thanksgiving, I think about that team earning the right to practice on Thanksgiving to be in the national playoffs. And you know, one of the phrases we use all the time is each of us needs all of us. And I told our team on Thanksgiving, I mean, we were watching the NFL games in Stick Lecture Hall, a big lecture hall on campus, watching it together. Our parents made a Thanksgiving meal for our players. So we actually got to have Thanksgiving meal together. Mm -hmm. And the parents there, the coaches, you know, we had some, you know, Coach Gibson, our athletic director, other people stopping at pra practice on Thanksgiving just a picture of each of us needs all of us, how it takes everyone to get to the national playoffs. That's what I think of when I think of that Thursday. Wow. You made it a memorable Thanksgiving. You, it wasn't <laughs> like you, you bypassed Thanksgiving. You made it bigger and better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, just everything about this season, I think. I'm glad I even think about that Thursday, but you, you taking us to that picture, uh, practicing then, um, yeah. it does capture how special the 2023 season truly was. Yeah. As you observed uh, your players, their demeanor, their approach, their body language in the NCAA playoffs. I mean, yeah. you knew them, they're great guys, but did you learn anything about them? Uh, this is, for, for some, it would have been their biggest stage of their athletic career. Did you learn yeah. anything? I did. Uh, honestly, I, I felt they applied what we talked about all year and, and everything that came to this year. And that was uh, our phrase. One thing we said a lot was be anchored in identity, expand it with intentionality, activate it by faith. Mm. That's what we said from day one. What we meant by that is, be anchored in who you are. You know, we have a vision for every position in our program. Be anchored in your identity. That's who you are. So if you're a quarterback, win one-on-ones. That's who you are. And if you expand it with intentionality, meaning every day you lay a brick to get better at that identity of win one-on-ones, you have earned the right to go into a game and have no fear. You've earned the right to have faith. Hey, I know who I am. <laughs> yeah. I build into that every day. No matter who's on the other side of that field, I've earned that right to have faith in, in going out there and playing confidently. That's what the 2023 team did. And, and what a lesson for life, right? In life, my identity is in Christ. If I pour into that with intentionality every day, well, when the storms of life throw something at you, bro, you can have faith that I know who I am. I've been pouring into that. I can have faith to handle whatever comes my way. I felt this team, especially in the national playoffs against the best teams in the yeah. country, they played confident and with faith. And I told them, goes back to your identity and intentionality. And I'm just so proud of the way they live that out. And I told them, just now do that for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> it looked that way. I'm watching the live streams. They were confident. They were ready. They were yeah. ready to go. They yeah. Did everything you said. Yeah. 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 Neat comment on that. I could just say a pretty cool story that yeah. I know people appreciate is um, when we were about 6-0, and 7-0, and everyone was getting excited about the potential for natural playoffs. And, and one of the things after practice one day I did, I went like this and I said, guys, Hope you know we're doing this on house money. And, and what I meant by that is we always say, don't derive fulfillment from football, bring it to football. Mm. I said, you should not feel pressure. Are we gonna finish this out? Are we gonna go undefeated? You're playing on house money, be full and free, play out of overflow. Nice. Well, in the first round of the playoffs, the situation was we were down six points, 11 seconds left, fourth and 10 from the 13 yard line. 
and they called a timeout. So here we are, last play of the season if we don't complete it. And we get in the huddle, and one of our senior captains went like this. He said, hey, guys, play it on house nice. money. Play it on house <laughs> money. Play full and free. And our guys were smiling. I'm like, this is the biggest moment in program uh, history, and they're smiling. So to your point there, play in full and free, play it on house money. Even in that biggest moment, yeah. they were doing that. And I'm just so proud of this group. Mm, love it. Most coaches talk about when they wrap up the season, they're already on to the next one. They're on to the next camp, the next season, the next game, already scouting that first opponent. Coming off the most successful season in school history, have you allowed yourself to reflect a little bit, think back before you think forward? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did take some extra time because I, I truly don't know how much I got to enjoy it in season just because of you're always moving, like you said, on to that next thing. Um, but, but to stop and reflect, I mean, our motto from day one has been brick by brick. Uh, on August 13th, 2016, we said we exist as a program to glorify God in the pursuit of earning a degree, building lasting relationships, and competing for PAC championships. Getting the messages from guys in the 2016 class, 2017 mm -hmm. class, 2018, all the reflection of truly all the bricks that had to be laid for many years to get to enjoy what we got to enjoy this year. Just to give you an example, we got rings to celebrate our season. And a comment from a 2017 senior we had, um, he, had he said, truly from rags to riches. And, and, what, and he put it with a smile face because my first year we went 0 and 10. <laughs> and there was an article posted in a newspaper about an amazing story of another team and it said they went from rags to riches. And I told our guys, hey, with every challenge comes an opportunity. I forgot I had said this. <laughs> I said, with every challenge comes an opportunity. I said, this could be the Grove City football story too. You know, that's, that's the beauty, that's the blessing of 0-10. Instead of being upset about 0-10, it's a blessing. And he, re he recalled that talk. And those little moments like that to appreciate the guys who endured the, the, the truly hard times record-wise, um, I think those are the things I've reflected on the most. Okay. I'm really fishing for a specific moment though last year that maybe you've played back post-game celebration, call from an alum or an administrator, anything like that? Yeah, you know, I, uh, there, there have been so many. Um, it, there have been countless alumni, administrators, right. you know, reaching out. And, um, but, but when I think about most in my reflection are specific moments. Mm -hmm. You know, I take a, a Shea Aiken against Carnegie Mellon, a backup safety where we had an injury to our starter. He goes and makes an interception and a sack, and he's, <laughs> he, he didn't even go into the game as the starter, and he's being interviewed by Division Three football <laughs> after the game, and his mom there, and she's there That's with him. Great. But I think about moments like that, guys, who, or Ryan Lenhart, he's the young man who caught the touchdown to win the game against Susquehanna. There's games where he doesn't get targeted one time, mm. and he makes the catch, the biggest catch in program history. Mm. Um, it's those moments that when I truly look back on this season, and there's so many of them, I give you those two examples of Shay Aiken and Ryan Lenhart, because they're guys who do what they're called to do every day. And when their moment comes, you know, I take Luke Jolly, he was a backup offensive tackle. Our starter went down late in the season. He had barely any starts and he's starting in the national playoffs <laughs> and we win the game. I think about those are three examples of young men who did their job every day, not knowing if they would enjoy any fruits of it. Mm -hmm and then they got to enjoy those fruits on the biggest stage. That's, those are the moments that stick out the moment, most when you ask that. Mm. I do love how the coaching philosophy has not changed since 2016, your first year, 0-10. 2017, you finally get a win, breaks the school's 33-game losing streak, and you celebrate it as if you'd won a PSC championship. But the vision, the purpose, the love, the brick by brick, it's still in place here in your eighth season, coming into your ninth season now. Um, are we going to tweak, though, the competing for PAC championships? Is that going to change? Or are we stepping that up just a bit? Yeah, uh, we are. So a little bit of history yeah. there. Um, I, I was asked to do a clinic about, they wanted me to talk about going from 0-10 to 10-0 and because our first season we went 0-10 mm -hmm. and the most recent 10-0. And, and, and I titled the talk, The Power of Vision from 0-10 to 10-0 because I said our story the last eight years has been a story of vision. Uh, first, all we had was a program vision, compete for PAC championships. And, and, you know, I define vision as this, a clear picture of who I am and the target of who I aim to be. Meaning most people, when they think vision, they just think, okay, you talk about winning championships, the target. Well, that's part of it. But vision's who I am. In 2016, every decision I make, recruiting, strength and conditioning, how do we compare against the other 10 teams in the PAC? That needs to drive my decisions in 2016. You know, I tell our guys, it's no different in my faith. My vision is to live satisfied in Christ. That's the target. I can't wait to be with him someday in heaven. 
But Christ is who I am. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He lives in me. So vision has two parts to it. My point in sharing that is, in 2016, compete for PAC championships, that drove every decision we made. Mm -hmm. Well, then after three years, we found an offensive vision, defensive vision, special teams vision. So that vision got more specific. That drives every play we put in. This year, we had position visions. You know, when I stood at practice, quarterbacks would walk on the field. Why are you here today? Win one-on-ones, coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a D lineman would walk on the field. Why are you here today? Defeat two, coach. Right? Every position has a vision. Well, we had program, unit, position. Well, now we won the PAC. And now I have data from national teams because now we've actually played national opponents. The national champs, we lose by one. So our vision now is compete for PAC and national championships. Boom. <laughs> and again, you know, for, for anyone who hears that, it's not just the target, hey, we're, we want to win a national title. It's now when I make decisions, I take in the factors of what we, what we learned in the national playoffs. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of come full circle that program vision influenced all these, you know, got more specific to where now that actually has, I always say, built upon our program vision. It's not change, it's just built upon, we're still competing, but now we have to add in that national component. I love it. Well, Coach, all those listening and watching right now, they gotta be thinking, this guy could be a great motivational speaker. Um, you're engaging, you're authentic, you're real. Where did that come from? Do you, are you a big reader? Do you like to watch motivational talks? I mean, that, that's, I know your dad's a minister, <laughs> brother's a minister too, yeah, right? Yes, yes. So you, you've grown up seeing public speaking. You're yes. a professional speaker yourself too. In addition to your coaching, you, 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 yeah. you go to big football organizations and share that. Um, do you enjoy that as much as coaching? Yeah. I do. I yeah. do. I very neat the opportunities to speak just even over the last couple of months. You know, I, I, always, I was told when I was in college, never turn down a speaking opportunity unless you have to. Obviously, if you have conflicts, right. but if you're asked and you can do it, never turn it down. Uh, I, my father and brother, my family, huge influences in that. Obviously, as you mentioned, my, a lot of my family is in the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the most uh, impactful things to me, there's a man named Pat Williams. I love reading him. He's written a lot of books on leadership. He founded the Orlando Magic basketball organization mm -hmm. in the 1980s. I heard him speak twice, once in high school, once in college. And he wrote a book, The Seven Sides of Leadership. And it just captivated me. I mean, I'm like, wow, everything in leadership can be summed up in seven sides. He, he, had, he had listed you know, all these leaders he met with. The first side of leadership was vision. And a vision keeps you focused, a vision keeps you fueled, a vision helps you finish. As you know, I was sold on that. I said, if I'm ever a leader, it's going to be about vision. But his second side was communication. He said, if you have a vision, that's great, but you must be able to communicate that vision. Mm -hmm. And he gave all these tips to study the art of public speaking. You know, lose your notes. Know, know what you are about so much that you mm -hmm. could talk about it on the drop of a hat. You know, he, he said things like this, be clear, be concise, be correct. So that's why we have four second phrases. They're very clear. We can summarize a message and focus on your vision, not your circumstance. A short, concise statement. And we believe it's accurate that if our guys focus on their vision, not their circumstance, it'll impact their life. So Pat Williams, Leadership Excellence, have a vision and study the art of public speaking to communicate that vision. That has been the best resource. Uh, I read it every summer <laughs> yeah. to remind me to refine my vision and the program vision, my personal life vision, the program vision but also, Andrew, practice every year. How are you communicating this and how can you communicate it more effectively? The, that's probably been the biggest resource. Yeah. I think communication is a game changer. In yeah. Everything. yeah, yeah. So as you're communicating to your team, your guys, how many guys on the team, how would you say? So we had 120 this year. 120, <laughs> okay. So of the 120, you're commu communicating uh, your, your yes. philosophy to them. How many come in already all in and how many need a little onboarding process? It's a great question. Actually, I was speaking at an event and one of the first questions was similar to that. And the question there was, you know, how bought in are people or, or you know, do you have to deal with letting people go, things like that? And I said, really, no. I mean, both staff and player wise, you know, guys that have come in, uh, we haven't had too many issues. At the beginning, maybe a little bit. But I say this, I say that's the power of a vision. When we meet with a family or when we hire someone, we are very clear. We exist to glorify God spiritually build lasting relationships socially, earn a degree academically or mentally, compete for PAC and national championships now physically. And obviously for years it was just compete for PAC yeah. championships. So we communicate clearly, this is who we are, this is what you're gonna hear. And there's many benefits to vision, but I would say one of the big ones is, when you come and play football at Grove City, you know exactly what we're gonna talk about on a daily basis. And because we're so clear with our vision and recruiting with our staff, 
I mean, are, are there different levels of buy-in as far as guys who, you know, their main factors are, I want a good engineering degree in football, or hey, I want, you know, you know Grove City, I have connections there, you know, family, things like that, spiritual components. Of course, everyone has different factors, but I believe if you have a very clear vision um, and, and you speak that and then you follow through with it when they're here, oh, wow, this is really all we talk about. Um, I, I think buy-in has been a huge part of our success lately. Okay, I want to turn back the clock now. I'll wind back all the way back to you. You're a kid now, <laughs> playing probably a bunch of sports. Why football? Did, why did football become your first love? Yeah, you know, I did all the sports growing up. Started with soccer and then football, baseball, basketball, and then high school went to just football and basketball. Um, I love every sport. I, I think there's so many components to it. Um, football, to me, it was one sport where truly there is no way this play is going to work unless there are 11 guys doing their job. And, and I think that's in every sport. I think for maybe people gravitate towards certain sports, but to me, truly, I played quarterback. If you didn't have an offensive line blocking, you had no, if all five of them didn't block, there was no way you were getting the pass off. That receiver better get open and catch the ball, and that running back better come up and block. There was just something about football and do your 111 that I loved, that true picture that hey, I'm just the foot, I need the hand, I need the ear, right? That's a biblical illustration, and God tells us, the hand doesn't say to the foot, I have no need of you, you need it. <laughs> and football just gave me such an appreciation that, A, how much I need others, uh, but B, also, there are people dependent upon me, um, truly to come every day and get better because that receiver is working hard, and if I'm not working so hard to be at my best to get him the ball, then he's working hard and I'm letting him down. And it, there was something that I felt about community and football that I fell in love with. And I think that's why for me, and I think you can get that in any sport, but for me, that's football is really where community, um, I just fell in love with the game. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's why football is, is what I've always had a, the deepest passion for. Mm. Well, you didn't just play quarterback, you played it really well. You, you set almost every uh, Western Pennsylvania high school record at South Fayette. Then you come here at Grove City College and, and set all the passing records too. Your, your uh, brother preceded you here, yeah. setting the receiving records. Yeah. And he was a big part in you choosing Grove City College, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it was just his experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and we shared a room for 14 years together. <laughs> so, and he's five years older than me, so truly everything he did, I wanted to do it. Pretty cool, you mentioned his record. Uh, we had a guy a few years ago break his record, and I always am excited that, hey, I got to call the place to get my brother out of the record books, you know, it's pretty special. Uh, but when my brother came to Grove City, we talk about whole person development, how he grew spiritually. Really, his faith became his own. Obviously, we, we grew up in an amazing home, and but at some point, right, you go away, it's gotta become your own faith. Mm -hmm. Socially, the professors, his coaches here, I mean, Coach Smith and the staff, I mean, just amazing, uh, you know, how the impact they had on him. Obviously, academically challenged, had great opportunities coming out, and loved his football experience. And when I saw that, and it, obviously we're biased, we love Grove City, where else can you get high-level football, high-level academics, professors, coaches, players that are so invested in you and get pushed in your faith in the classroom, on the field, uh, I just fell in love with it, and, and when I went through the process, I said, I'm sure you, there's other places you can get that, mm -hmm. but I know I can get all four yes. at a high level at Grove City, and uh, it became a no-brainer for me. Hmm. Well, I shudder to think of what would have happened if your brother hadn't chosen Grove City College. So how did he choose Grove City? How, yeah. how, what brought him here? Yeah, we, so he was looking at high academic schools. I mean, he was a very great mm -hmm. student. I, I do remember him going on you know, some, to some very high academic institutions that he was looking at, and someone said, hey, I know you're looking at all uh, high academic schools. You know, there's a Christian school just about an hour north of Pittsburgh. And so I don't know exactly who did, but someone told my dad about Grove City. You should go take a look at it. Uh, and that was the first time we really got, ex my family got exposed to Grove City. And, and they came up on their visit and they were sold right away. So uh, looking at high academic schools, he actually, uh, he got an extra effort award winner, I believe, that was on the local news. And someone said, hey, I heard the schools you're looking at. They're all academic. Why don't you? There's a high academic mm -hmm. school, Grove City. I think that is really the reason we first became aware of Grove City, and then uh, they just came and fell in love on their visit. Hmm. When you graduated, you're in the car driving away, cap and gown in the car. Did you think you might come back someday? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was a dream. It, it was really a dream was. right then. It was. Mm -hmm. I uh, I felt the call to coach. I I heard a few men when I was a student here describe coaching as ministry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually, I heard Billy Graham. He was interviewed, and he said, "He may have had a quote. He said." 
a coach will impact more young people in a season than most people will in a lifetime. And I heard that. I called my dad because he's a pastor. I said, Dad, I'm going to ministry too. Just call me coach, not pastor. That's going to be the only difference because I did feel a call to ministry. I just heard mm -hmm. that and said it's going to be through coaching. And I, my first job was at a Division One school. And you know, when you're at a D1 school, everyone talks about what's your dream job, right? Mm -hmm. I remember our guys would be there late hours, right? Division One, you know, working, learning the game. And I, what an amazing experience that was. But I remember sitting there thinking, my dream is to be at a school, Grove City, I mean, specifically mm -hmm. at, a, at a school like Grove City, because of the reason of those four things I mentioned, spiritual, social, mental, physical. Again, I'm sure you do that most places, but physically, I mean, like we said, top 10 football, academically high ranked, but it's the only place that I know socially from experience mm -hmm. <laughs> that I could sit with a family and say, these coaches changed my life. Mm -hmm. These players changed my life. These guys in my wedding, iron sharpens iron. What they were doing in their 20s, I mean, these are the guys I, I had meals with, you know, and played ball with. And then spiritually, this place changed my life. Um, obviously, in a great Christian home, but the guys I was around that pushed me in my faith, where my faith really became my own, the love for Scripture. I just love this place, and, and I know at Grove City, you can get all four at a high level. And to me, when I view coaching as ministry, Grove City was my dream job for that reason. Mm -hmm. To be able to do all four and not all four at a high level. And yeah, my senior year cap and gown, <laughs> I was thinking, hey, someday <laughs> Grove City. Right, and your mind didn't change even at a Division One Buffalo. Or uh, you work for the Steelers, too. You had some experience yeah. on the field, Steeler, NFL game days. It doesn't yes. get much greater than that. So you're, you're, you, have, you have a taste of that, too. I've heard that you, you, you've worked in the marketing department. It was an yes. internship? Internship. I've never heard what specifically you did with the Steelers. On the yeah. Field. What were you doing? Yeah, it was a marketing internship. This was the summer between sophomore and junior year here at Grove City. Mm -hmm. So I was a summer intern. A uh, big thing for us, Steelers have a thing called men's fantasy camp. So it's, it's all these men who go to Latrobe before the Steelers go, yeah. and they get to go through training camp as if they were a part of it, <laughs> as they were going through it. So a big thing for me was handling all of that uh, in the marketing department, in the offices. At that point, the Steelers were making more seats available at Heinz Field, so it was really neat. People would come, I'd help tour them around. Um, and then I got to work game day. So you know, I did work game day for the Steelers, even when I was a student here playing. Mm -hmm. So I'd get there four hours before kickoff, and you know, a lot of it was special ticket holders, take them around the field so they mm -hmm. can be on the sidelines during warm-ups. And then I uh, just very blessed with the opportunity that they said, hey, would love for you to continue working game day. So I did it after junior year again. Um, I mean, you know, six, 60,000 terrible towels, the yeah. roaring crowd. I mean, you're sitting there, you're going like, I could do that. It never yeah. really occurred to you, like, you want to work there. But it's, yeah. This is kind of a cool experience. Oh, unbelievable <laughs> experience. Uh, and just got to be there on the sideline yeah. for some historic Steeler football games. Yeah. Uh, you know, just it was an amazing opportunity. And um, it just, but I, as I was sitting there, it, it confirmed to me, I want to coach, you know, I love, and I, and I did medical sales when I did high school. I love business. I love sales. I would say whatever God would call me to, I think I'd enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But even just being there, I thought I'd be at training camp working and think, oh, I'd love to be doing what they're doing mm -hmm. coaching wise, not necessarily needing to go to the NFL, but just coaching. Yeah. But I think even that experience solidified to me. If you know, I ever got the opportunity to be on the field coaching, I would love to do that. And, mm -hmm. and that Steeler experience helped confirm that. Okay. And you mentioned you uh, did some business, some sales. Yeah. So your major was business, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I was a business major and I was coaching at the University of Buffalo. And then I came back, finished my master's, and I was coaching high school football. And I had the opportunity to do medical sales. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it's, it's amazing how the Lord works. <laughs> so I worked medical sales three years. To come here and be able to recruit I am so forever grateful and thankful for three years of medical sales. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything yeah. could have prepared me more to understand the beautiful part of sales, to ask the right questions, to see if someone's a good fit, mm -hmm. to understand when you ask questions, if they might not be a good fit, let them know right away, right. hey, this might not be the best fit. But to ha sales taught me how to ask the right questions and how to truly get to know people, listen to them. Sales is all about listening, not talking. Mm -hmm. That blew my mind when mm -hmm. I did that, right? But those three years were so foundational to become here and put a recruiting plan together for Grove City. So just uh, amazing how the Lord works and I'm so forever grateful for that experience. Yeah, because to rec recruit a small college football player, yeah, that's challenging, yes? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you're doing it for the love of the game. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think back more than 31 years now, more than 30 years now, when I was a student here, me balancing football with academics, but it was intramural football. <laughs> and I barely survived, right? So, I mean, yeah. you're asking a lot. Yeah. How do you do it? Yeah. And it, the better question is, is do you see athletics 
as, as a way to actually give them some discipline. And, and it's, it's not like, it's not pulling them away from their studies, but it's actually a way to maybe keep them more focused on their studies. Yeah, yeah, and you use that word discipline, which I love. You know, one of our phrases is discipline equals freedom. Um, and we took that from Navy SEALs, we studied it. Mm -hmm. uh, but discipline equals freedom. Discipline is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and there's so many examples of that, right? If you're disciplined with your finances, right, that could lead to cer certain freedoms. There's uh, just discipline, you know, in my faith. You know, if I, I'm much better when I start my day in the Word compared to when I don't, right? So discipline in the Word leads to reminding, oh yeah, for freedom, Christ has set me free. Discipline leads to freedom. Football is such a good picture of that, where, you know, you, got, you still got to lift. We lift no different in the off season than higher levels that are getting scholarships. You know, we, we got to lift four days a week. We we got to we do spring football. You know, so we through the month of April are doing spring football. So you're working all year round on football. But when you get up in the morning, get your workout in, discipline, so you can be free to have the rest of your day to be on your academics. You know, invest in those relationships in your life, and just the lesson our guys learn. When you were 0 and 10, focus on your vision, not your circumstance. But you were disciplined to lay bricks. And I always tell a story. We had a young man. We were 0 and 9. And in the senior year, he's 0 and 9, had never won a game here. So he transferred in. He was 0 and 29 at this point in his career. And it was our first year, and it was our last week of practice. I said, Brett, why are you going to practice today? He said, to compete for PAC championships, coach. <laughs> I mean, what was he saying? He was saying, I'm laying bricks so those freshmen behind me don't have to endure 0-10, that they could maybe win a game, win the school's first postseason game. Mm -hmm. Those lessons of truly being able to focus on the vision, not the circumstance, and I would say in that instance, to be disciplined, to still lay bricks and do what you're supposed to so other people can be free enough to win a pack championship. Mm -hmm. Those lessons, I think, are so so um, such an important part for guys who love football, want to continue playing, and if we can teach them how to apply, focus on your vision, not your circumstance, discipline equals freedom, I think that's the beauty of small college football and what it can teach you. Mm. That's all a reflection of you coaching by, and your staff, yeah, mm -hmm. the, to get that kind of buy-in, like yeah. you say, approaching possible 0 and 30, still competing for a PAC championship and a NCA birth. Yeah. Years later. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, you mentioned spring football. We're second day of spring football now. Can you give us a yeah, brief preview? What, what, what's coming up this fall? Yeah. So, you know, really exciting. We have a lot back, uh, you know, which is exciting coming off the team that we had. So it's pretty nice. We get 16 practices in the month of April. So, you know, really get to clean up some things from the previous season. Um, but to be honest, it's just so good to be back with our guys. We had our first meeting, you know, yet last night. Uh, and, and just to see how packed that room is. I mean, we have a lot of just retention, a lot of guys who want to continue to build. And um, so spring is, they talk about discipline equals freedom. Um, you know, we're not in full pads, not any of that, but doing the work in April so that we can truly enjoy in November a chance to do what we did this past year. I think that's what I love about spring football. Um, a lot of teaching time, a lot of just community being with our guys. And I think that's the beauty of what we do in April. Mm -hmm coming off last year's success, are you feeling a, a new energy, maybe, maybe more so than you have in the past? Is, is, is there more focus, more, let's get going, let's get to work, are you feeling that at all? Yeah. It's, a, it's a great question, and I'm so forever grateful for Pat Williams. When he said, a vision keeps you focused, a vision keeps you fueled, a vision helps you finish, I think a neat compliment, we have a, it's pretty neat, I have multiple coaches who played for me in those first couple years that are now back on our staff. We have another one who, who came back, and, and one of them, sat in a meeting for the first time in years, I was like, oh, it's no different than, <laughs> you know, <laughs> five years ago. And I say, a vision can truly keep you fueled. I mean, when you wake up every day and know, hey, the vision for my life still lives satisfied in Christ, that's how I know next week I can get up and have joy is, that's the vision. If I put my eyes there and then intentionally feed into that, and I think it's the same thing. No matter, you know, I, the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 said, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether it be high or low. And the thing I've enjoyed most is seeing our teams, whether we finish coming off 0-10 or 10-0, I think there's the same joy, the same fuel, the same focus, because, mm. and I say this, um, we play an infinite game, not a finite game. That's a lesson we talk all the time. Meaning, like when I say with our quarterbacks on a Friday, this is before Saturday, I say, hey, your vision's to win one-on-ones. Whether we win or lose tomorrow, what's your job on Monday when we watch film? to learn about win one-on-ones, coach. So I said, winning and losing actually has no impact on what you're called to do Monday. What are you called to do Monday? Win one-on-ones, coach. When you understand that that vision's an infinite game. So, coach, you won the pack title. Well, 
My job is to lay bricks every day making the best decisions for this program to put us in a position to compete for PAC and national championships. So win or lose, whether it's 0-10 or 10-0, and doesn't change how I have to make decisions in February. So when you play that infinite game, not a finite game, that win or lose, and guess what? If you lose a game, you throw an interception, next play, guess what? Win one-on-ones, it's okay, go. move on, focus on the right things. I think the most exciting thing I've seen with our team is I honestly don't feel like we've approached anything differently. And, and I think that truly shows me that even after winning, just our staff, because that's who I've mainly been with, mm -hmm they truly understand that this is an infinite game, not a finite game. So win or lose shouldn't affect how you approach things. And I think I've seen that displayed so far this spring. Mm. Well, bricks are being laid for a beautiful new field house on the lower <laughs> campus. Talk about what that's going to do for your program. Oh, it's, a, it's such a blessing. I think one of the biggest things is I think we have used every inch of that current field house <laughs> you know, as we've continued to have success. Right. And, and we always say, be, one of the things the word says is be thankful in all circumstances. So we are so thankful for that field house. It's not at all to say we're not thankful for every inch of space. Uh, you know, when we meet, we uh, you know, we don't meet separately. We use that for our good because we don't have the room to. Like, we can't divide up. Hey, O linemen go there. Quarterbacks, <laughs> receivers here. We kind of just all pile in in the spring. Our whole offense and defense in the same room. We just divide it up into a half. Uh, locker room space. We we use multiple locker rooms now to get everybody in there. So. Honestly, I think the biggest thing in New Fieldhouse is just to have the space to properly meet, to have locker rooms that we can all be in the same area. I mean, I, I think that's what I'm most excited for. Uh, just appreciate all the work that's going in, how many people are bought into. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's many benefits to this Fieldhouse, just recruiting and facilities, having, you know, we want to, in all ways, you know, pursue excellence and national playoffs. I mean, you see facilities and, mm -hmm. and yeah, to have a field house that can compete with anyone in the country. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing I'm excited for is just the space <laughs> to, to adequately, and, and we, we make the most of it now, but meeting space, locker room space. Uh, I think that's going to be the, a huge benefit to this new field house. As we wind down, Coach, uh, I know a coach really um, never winds down their season. You're always on, but is, is, are we coming up on maybe you know, four, six weeks when you can kind of chill a little bit and do something fun? And, and if so, what are those things that Andrew does? What, what are your hobbies? How do you kick yeah. back, relax? What do you do? Yeah. Besides reading. Go, 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 yeah. Give me something else besides reading. Yeah. No, <laughs> honestly, it's faith. It truly is faith football family. Uh, you know, when I'm not in the word, my, you know, and alone with the Lord and not here coaching, you know, yeah. Uh, it's with my family. My daughter's eight, my son's five, my daughter's into dance now, so we just had her dance competition. So two weekends in March, there was no football. It was 100, <laughs> that's a whole new world for me, but it's, oh my goodness, it yeah. was uh, just so much fun watching her do what she loves. And uh, so a lot of dance with her and then, you know, my son's five, so he's at such a fun age. So uh, we just go to a park, go to a field. He's right in the midst of enjoying anything you do with him. He loves it, catch a ball, play with trucks. Um, so, uh, that will be uh, pretty much all my time when I'm not at football is with my wife and those two. Love it. Well, Coach, appreciate the time. Great getting to know you better. Yeah. Uh, hope we can catch up soon again. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, blessing. Thank Good you. Luck, man. Appreciate Take it. Care. Thanks for tuning into Grove City College's inaugural Grit and Glory podcast. To follow the football team this upcoming season, including live streams on game days, visit athletics.gcc.edu. To find out how you can support the Wolverines with the Fieldhouse Project and the Impact 150 campaign, visit gcc.edu slash impact150. Don't forget to follow Grit and Glory wherever you listen to podcasts. More episodes featuring excellence, character, and faith in the world of athletics are coming up. Until next time, I'm Joe Klumchak. Bye for now.